So we're just going to start on with this podcast about how to make some basic plots um, very quickly from the previous one. Um, so if you haven't already got it left over from the previous uh, example, we're working with these this set of little mouse weights that we've created. So we type those in manually using a line like this. So if you haven't got mouse weights here in your global environment, um, you might want to just type those numbers in again like this. So we are, just to remind ourselves, we're creating an object called mouse.weights and into that we are assigning this vector here of, of numbers. So it's a concatenated C list with these numbers 16.6, etc, etc, all the way up to 21.5. Um, and just to get a flavor for that, again, remind ourselves, a summary, the smallest value is 10.9, the largest value is 25, and the mean is about 16.94. So we might want to just plot that so we can just basically plot mouse weights and see what we get. So what it does is it's produced a, a quick scatter plot. Now a scatter plot is some values y against some values x. So it has to be one number against another. But we've only given it one set of numbers, and that's the y data. So it's interpreted that we want to plot the mouse weights. So that's what it's plotted on the y-axis here. So the numbers again go from like 10.9, that's this one down here up to a maximum of 25, that's this data point here, and every other data point in between. And then, because it, because it has to plot something against something else, it's basically plotted on the x-axis, it's plotted the index, or the position of each of those numbers. So this is like position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5, and that's what it's done exactly here. So this data point here is 16.6, plotted here, 16.6, position 1. Position 2 is 12, there is position 2, that's got value of 12, position 3, 10.9, etc, etc, all the way up. So those are the 10 data points plotted. So as a plot, this is not hugely informative for this kind of data. It, uh, you know, we normally, I mean, I, as we'll see later on in the course, I will maintain there's only basically a scatter plot, the only real basic type of plot. Anything else is just a, a way of summarizing a scatter plot. But, you know, in this example, it's not a great, way to visualize the data, but it does quickly let us see what the sort of spread of our data is across all the, the 10 entries in this example. Um, so the other way we might want to do this is to plot a histogram. So a histogram kind of aggregates that data um, like this. So that's a histogram there plotted. So this says basically there are, as because it's the frequency, it says there are on the x-axis now are our weights. So it's plotted our x-axis is the weights, the mouse weights. And it's put breakpoints, bin points at 10, 15, 20, and 25. And then on the y-axis, it's counting how many data points are in that range. So what this says is there are four data points of four mice whose weights range between 10 and 15 grams. There are three between 15 and 20, and there are three again between 20 and 25. Um, and it's basically, you know, it's just labeled, it's stuck, it's it's guessed, it's just written the word mouse weights, whatever the name of the object is here on the x-axis, and it's plotted whatever. It's just by default says it's a histogram of that variable here in the in the, in the mouse dot weights. So we can augment that a bit, of course, as with any plot, you can if you type question mark hist or question mark plot, you'll see a whole lot of options. So we can change the the main. So the main argument is going to be this the name that's put put up here. So we call this house mouse weights. Like that. We'll say the X lab the X label is, and in between these inverted commas here, it's a, uh, we'll say that's the weight, so it's the mass, grams, like that, uh, and we hit return, and then we just see that those, those changes have taken effect. So now instead we've got a more formal. So in this way you can actually specify titles for your graph if you want. You can specify very explicitly what labels to put on your x and y axis throughout. So another quick, another kind of quick plot we might do is to then do a box plot. So if we had lots of different mice, if we had lots of different groups of mice maybe that we want to do, we want to compare them very quickly, we would do what's called a box plot. So again, I'll spend much more time talking about this in, in later podcasts. So this is a basic box plot there. It's left off the, the label, so we can say x lab equals um, mice, you know, or like how, you know, whatever we want to call this. We might want to put an actual species name there. We just say mouse there on that, and we say y lab is mass in grams. 
like that. So we've got a more informative graph now. So again, these are the range of masses of the mice in our in our vector of, of in our vector that we created. It's plotting here basically just do this quickly. That black line is the median. This is the interquartile range. So 50% of the data are in here inside this box. And then these whiskers then extend, in this case, they extend to the, the max and the min of the data because because they're not, if, if the data went much further out, it would stop at one and a half times the size of this box, but it keeps going out until either it hits one and a half times this distance here, or until it hits the biggest or smallest value in the, in the data set. So in this case, this is the max and this is the min. So that's by way of just really quick example, it just shows you how you can, uh, how you can create some really basic quick plots of your data in the previous one, we saw how we can create summary statistics. In this podcast, we just saw very quickly how to make some simple plots of the data. Um, and now we can spend much more time later on in the next few podcasts reading in, reading in our more complicated, our actual larger data sets from experiments that have been done, um, manipulating data, making much more informative plots and comparisons visually, and then using ultimately using statistical tests to sort of put a degree of confidence or put a degree of objectivity on whether the patterns we observe in the pictures and images match um, predictions that we make about how our system is behaving.